for land use applications such as neighborhood rezoning. I do want people to know that we have headphones in the back for Spanish speakers. Buenas noches. Este evento dispone de traducción simultánea al español. Si necesitan auriculares para participar en esa traducción, vayan a buscar al joven en la mesa atrás con el eh, mantel azul. Now I want you to know that normally you would have to silence your phone during events like this, but you should keep your phones out and you can join in the Twitter conversation as time goes on. You'll be able to share your tweets about the inward rezoning if you use the hashtag inward rezoning. Number sign inward If you're not on Twitter, we'll have question cards you can fill out. Some of you have already done that. And then we also have testimony that has already come to our website. You should know that in the back, also upstairs, everyone who wants to testify, in addition to what you say, in the small amount of time that we have tonight, we have space set up so you can make a video recording of your testimony. The space is located just outside the auditorium in the lobby area. So I just want to say thank you to community board number 12. I know there are members here because on March 26, community 12 
29% of everybody in a rent stabilized apartment in Inwood is living in a situation where the owner has cut the rent in terms of what we have to pay, but he can up it, and she can up it at any moment. There are 16,000 residential units in Inwood, 10,000 are rent regulated. And a ProPublica study, ProPublica is a very legitimate nonprofit in think tank, said, as I said, 3,033 apartments have preferential rent in Inwood. And that makes the tenant at risk, because we don't have a state law that allows that program to be changed, and we are worried that the owner can do anything he or she wants to increase the rent. We know that the neighborhood lost over 400 rent-stabilized units between 20, 2007 and 2016, and probably more. That's the official count. And that doesn't count the preferential rents that went up in that same time period. The Inwood Plan seeks to address the housing crisis by creating opportunity for development. According to the draft EIS environmental impact statement, the rezoning would create a total of 4,348 units over 15 years. But nearly 3,000 of those units are expected to be market rate if the proposal goes through. If the current affordable housing stock continues to diminish and more than 60% of the new construction will consist of market rate units under the current proposal, or the underlying word proposal. Can the current proposal set forth by the city address the current affordable crisis in the area? That's a concern that I have and I'm sure you have. Regarding small business, I am very concerned about the small business. The plan presents pitfalls to the local small business community current operating in Inwood, in my opinion. According to the draft impact study, the DEIS, the area is expected to experience a net decrease of 50,614 square feet of light industrial space, which means manufacturing. The loss of light industrial space represents the concentration of wholesale businesses in Sherman Creek to two sites on the southern portion of the area, and also the eventual direct displacement and elimination of the auto-related businesses on Sherman Creek and Upland Wind sub-districts. That could mean over 20 businesses, some of which employ as many as 25 mechanics and staff, and those are jobs that we need. In addition to the changes in the wholesale and auto-related businesses, the plan for Inwood places the current retail sector of the neighborhood in jeopardy of direct and indirect displacement because many other businesses are located in single story or two story known as taxpayers. The plan creates an Inwood special district sub-district. I call it the commercial U. It consists of 82 lots at a total of a little over 863,000 square feet of space. 309 businesses and about 2,000 employees. These are primarily owned by the community of color, many owned by the Dominican community who lives in the area. Nearly half of the businesses, 147, are located in what we call soft sites. That could be the what I call the taxpayer. It's a site that could be built. The places, this place is nearly half of the commercial U mom and pop businesses and workers, in my opinion, in jeopardy of displacement. Inwood is very active and it represents the entrepreneurial spirit of the neighborhood and the residents and the tools to protect small businesses and give them opportunities for prosper, in my opinion, must be part of any rezoning plan. We will continue over the next few weeks to meet with stakeholders and agencies to prepare our recommendation. 
But I take what you say here very, very seriously. We did the same thing for East Midtown when we had a hearing, and we did the same thing for East, Mid East Harlem when we had a hearing, and we did the same thing in the Chinatown area, and we did the same thing in the South Street Seaport area. We listened to the community. After we make our recommendation on April 25th, as some of you know, that proposal will be placed in the hands of the City Planning Commission. The City Planning Commission has 60 days to review the proposal, and they too will have a hearing downtown. The City Planning Commission will issue their vote at the end of their review period. That's a vote on the rezoning plan. If approved by the City Planning Commission, the application will then go to the City Council. The City Council have 50 days to review and vote on the application, and then they will make a recommendation. Um, and I will. I hope. I know later. Uh, your wonderful council member, Donis Rodriguez, will be here. I look forward to hearing from all of you. It's important that you are engaging in this process. I hope that you liked the brochure that we mailed. Did anybody get this brochure in the mail? I hope you did. Thank you. Have you ever seen such a beautiful brochure? Thank you, John Houston, very much. I believe in making sure that everybody knows what's going on. So to make the process more meaningful, and I want to thank the Economic Development Corporation, they will have a little bit of time to talk about their proposal, and then to help us understand the concerns of the residents and businesses, and what might be done to address the amazing challenges. First we'll have a residential panel, and then we'll have a small business panel. But first I want to hear from the Economic Development Corporation, and thank you very much for being here. So for 
first when is Inwood need updated zoning? Zoning in Inwood has not been updated in over half a century, and it's holding back progress on some of these needs that the community has. As you know, zoning controls what you can build and where and how much you can build. And in Inwood, there are large portions of the neighborhood that are zoned for M or C8 districts, manufacturing and heavy commercial districts, where today you cannot build new housing. Where housing is allowed in the neighborhood, affordable housing is not required. And because of the lack of height limits, new development could erode existing character in large parts of the neighborhood. Current zoning also does not require waterfront public open space, and this is really a missed opportunity. So what are we doing about it? The city has already been investing in and, and helping to solve some of these problems, and as I mentioned, these investments work hand-in-hand -hand with the land use actions that we're here to talk about tonight. So first, the city is making investments in with long-term affordability, and this is really a three-pronged approach, and I'll, I'll let the panelists go into greater detail about this, but the first priority we know is to protect existing tenants, and the city is making investments um, to make sure that we're pr protecting people who live here today. Second, we're, pr we're working to preserve existing affordable housing, and again, I'll let our panelists talk a bit more in detail about those, those investments that are happening today. And the third prong is really to create new affordable housing, to make sure that there is a new supply coming online. And this is something that can really only be accomplished in any meaningful way through zoning. So as I mentioned today, there's no way to require permanently affordable housing on privately owned sites. So we're proposing to map MIH, mandatory inclusionary housing, in some areas to require permanently affordable housing. In addition, um, as part of our proposed action, the library project would create affordable homes along with a state-of-the-art library and universal uh, pre-K. We're excited uh, that a developer has been designated for this project um, and that it will create 100% affordable housing for the community. Um, and in addition, HPD encourages private property owners to work with them to, to try to find opportunities for additional affordable housing beyond MIH. We heard from the community board that there are, there are still concerns about affordability, and, and we're listening to this. We, we are hearing from the community that we want to find more opportunities for to build affordable housing, that they're concerned specifically about affordability levels and about tenant protections. So on the topic of infrastructure, um, the city is making investments today, and, and zoning is another tool that will, will help us create better infrastructure in Inwood. Um, the city is making investments in Inwood's parks, streets, and intersections um, to make them safer for pedestrians, um, upgrades to the Broadway Bridge, and replacing water and sewer infrastructure. The proposed land use actions are really needed to encourage an active public realm and waterfront open space. Today, there are parts of the neighborhood west of 10th Avenue where there are active streets, retail, and community use on the floor. The proposed zoning would reinforce this where it exists in the neighborhood and extend this character east to the waterfront. Um, east of 10th Avenue, the proposed zoning would also require that private property owners build out publicly accessible open space, and sidewalk widenings would be required in some areas to improve pedestrian circulation. We've heard from the community board concerns about these areas too. We've heard first support, um, loud and clear, for open space along the waterfront. We've heard that we need to look at investments in infrastructure. We've heard that we need to look at investments in parks um, and waterfront open space and community and recreation space. And then finally, access to opportunity. The city is making investments in this area as well, and zoning is another tool to help us achieve these goals. Just a few examples of what we're doing, and again, the panelists will go into greater detail. The new Manhattan Workforce One Center that's targeted to the residents of Inwood. The Neighborhood 360 program is supporting local businesses. The Business Solutions Center is offering courses for existing businesses. And the Building Community, Community Capacity Initiative is focused on um, grants and training for cultural organizations. And the proposed land use actions, again, are really designed to unlock more opportunities for, for Inwood residents. Mixed use zoning will encourage job intensive uses and space for existing businesses to grow and expand. We've heard from the community board that there are concerns around these areas and, and we're working to address them. We've heard that there's support for allowing additional com commercial space and community facility space throughout the neighborhood. Um, but we've heard that we want to make sure that we're protecting existing businesses and supporting entrepreneurs in Inwood. And that we need to develop strategies for economic development and additional workforce training. When we talk about zoning, the proposed actions are really about taking a balanced approach to zoning in the neighborhood. This is a zoning proposal that is not off the shelf. It's highly tailored to the unique conditions of Inwood. 
And as you recall, this is really a response to what we heard from the community. It was originally looking just at an area in um, east of 10th Avenue, and as a result of the engagement that we did and the feedback that we heard, over 80% of the expanded rezoning area was zoned for preservation. We heard from the community board that there are still concerns about height and density, and this is an ongoing process and we're, we're looking into that feedback. As the borough president mentioned, the community board submitted a very thorough and comprehensive recommendation, um, which supported some actions and included comments about zoning and, and clear priorities for city investment. We're reviewing that resolution as this process continues, and tonight we really want to hear from you, and we look forward to hearing the borough president's recommendation as well. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Y vamos a perder 
eh, esa oportunidad de seguir viviendo eh, y siendo parte de la comunidad. O sea, el plan de la ciudad básicamente está hiriendo a los inmigrantes, a las personas que son de clase trabajadora, a los latinos, a la persona negra y le están añadiendo a personas blancas, a personas con ingresos altos. Good evening, my name is Cheryl Pam and I'm a resident of Inwood and I'm one of the founding members of the Northern Manhattan Community Land Trust. This rezoning, which is the most significant potential change in Northern Manhattan in decades, is being advanced primarily for the benefit of people who do not live here now. Seniors, small business owners, artists, the thousands of Inwood residents who live in Dykeman houses have been entirely left out of any conversation. Wow. All we have to do today is read the news to see the harm that our government's neglect causes. A mother of young children is in a coma after rescuing her family from an apartment fire because NYCHA failed to replace her stove that she, re she complained about multiple times because the burners turned out by themselves. While she lives on the Upper West Side, the point is that our leadership has turned a blind eye to her because she is poor. Despite all the talk about public investments in the Inwood plan, we've heard nothing about the condition of buildings in the Dykeman Houses development, whether tenant complaints are being addressed timely and effectively, or whether there'll be any improvements in public spaces or community services used by the entire community in the Dykeman Houses development. And public housing is a critical yet invisible resource toward achieving the mayor's goals of reducing homelessness and creating stable neighborhoods. The Inwood plan is overly focused on what developers want, tall buildings and high rent. Thank you. Hi everyone. 
Uh, my name is Ian Galang. I'm a paralegal and a researcher at Manhattan Legal Services. Um, I work with the Inwood office. We've been working here for about a year and a half um, and have represented many buildings and many tenants in eviction proceedings and aggression against their landlords. I'm going to talk a bit about um, this plan from the perspective of those tenants and from the breadth of experience that we have here as advocates. So many of the individuals <clears throat> who are scheduled to testify here today will already have urged the office of the borough president to vote no on the current rezoning proposal. Such demands are based on a series of acute concerns shared by this community. That's why you're here. These concerns have been echoed in various hearings and marked this process until now. Federal housing policy in America was based on discrimination. Even the laudable aims of the New Deal had racist stereotypes and the ideology of segregation entrenched, entrenched across all housing stocks in nearly every state. New York was not an exception to this rule. Neighborhoods like Inwood have historically suffered from disinvestment because of such housing policies and their perpetuation. When we look at the success of Inwood and its unwavering vibrancy, we need to heed that this place is what it is today because of incredibly resilient, working class residents stayed and withstood that disinvestment in this district. This is what makes our city have the neighborhoods that we have in terms of the businesses, the culture, and the community. This resilience and sometimes resistance which has allowed them to stay havens for proud working class residents. So considering this history, it's not surprising that so many residents have come together to express their grievances and concerns. When we speak to our clients about the neighborhood changing, we hear anger and we hear dismay. Because despite this history of disinvestment and inadequate resources, now the city wants to shake things up and revitalize Inwood in a manner in which <clears throat> they believe will either directly exclude them, push them out, or just ignore their needs. Should these residents be forced into a position in which they have to accept the negative aspects of this proposal in order to acquire the positive elements it promises? Community improvement cannot remain contingent on rezoning policies, especially if neighborhoods where New Yorkers already have to struggle to pay rent, and they have to struggle beyond the struggle. And they attend the most segregated schools, and they have to contend with the most racist police. If this plan is approved, Inwood's landlords and future developers will be preparing for a windfall of revenue, even though they've kept many of these buildings in horrible conditions for years. This past year, we dealt with far too many intransigent landlords who failed to fix their elevators when they're out, even though elderly and disabled tenants depend on them. Right? There's a massive lack of heat right at the peak of winter. And now there's a new trend. Some of you may know about this from the organizing perspective. We have this new epidemic of cooking gas outages. They just are out for months, everybody gets hot plates, but yet they never get restored. And when they do get restored, the landlord gets taken out of the bank. So it should not be surprising this community has aimed to persuade the city to change this proposal. Community improvements such as affordable housing, bigger libraries, and better school resources, efficient public transportation, and community land trusts can be created without upzoning across Inwood. It shouldn't be And especially in our Inwood community office, as tenant advocates, we ask ourselves, who is this rezoning for? We're apprehensive that it's not for the current community, nor is it for newcomers, <clears throat> nor is it, sorry, for the current small businesses or the tenants, but rather it's for developers and for the more affluent newcomers that these landlords are banking on. And this raises the question, why does a vibrant, thriving community like Inwood need to accept rezoning in order to merit investment by the city? Weighed by the frenzied Inwood landlord 
is already being directed at driving out many of our clients and their neighbors. We believe it will only get worse if the rezoning gets approved. We believe that our clients and the broader Inwood community deserve all of the investment that ride on the coattails of rezoning, that they shouldn't have to face upzoning, displacement, and high gentrification to receive long overdue investment from their own city. around businesses that are closing and we want to make sure that these businesses stay here. 
on education. I want to see more investment. We need to see more investment in the quality of education. I have a four-year-old daughter who is going into pre-K in District 6, and I want to make sure that, like her, the other children in our community are able to have access to quality education. Early childhood is critical if we're going to move a workforce in Upper Manhattan. El, 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 la calidad de la educación tiene que mejorar. Tenemos que asegurar que tenemos programas que desde temprana edad enseñen a nuestros niños para que ellos puedan ser una parte íntegra de, 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 la, de la clase trabajadora de esta comunidad. Our high schools. We should not have to worry at every turn that a high school is closing in our district. And that is a problem that we've had far too much of time. Um, we have to see more investments there and we want to make sure that we see that going forward in this plan. Infrastructure. So I was recently appointed to be chair of the infrastructure subcommittee in the assembly. And infrastructure is something that I think is absolutely critical. We've seen what happens when infrastructure is ignored, and we want to make sure that that is something that this plan continues to look at. We want to see that if the capacity, as was mentioned here, grows, that the residents of Inwood grows, then we want to know that we have the infrastructures to serve them safely and to make sure that the people who live here do not see a downgrade in services. What are those services? Sanitation, our subway system, something we've seen in the news time and time again, our bus system, our network of buses are not functioning at the moment. We want to make sure that when these enhancements happen in our community, that we're also looking at accessibility, that we're looking at ADA compliance, that we're able to not just piecemeal the solutions for our transit system. Creo que es importante de que las soluciones de tránsito continúen en nuestra comunidad si vamos a agregar más personas. Es lógico de que tengamos un plan donde la comunidad no sufra de que los servicios de sanidad, de educación, de empleo bajen en la comunidad. As we also look at the environment, the access to the waterfront is important. I think that this plan takes a serious look at that. And we need to make sure that the investment in our public spaces, both green and blue, is there. Um, waterfront access is important, but we must also remember that this community is in a flood zone. And we do have flooding that has occurred here when we have hurricanes. We want to make sure that that is something that we also include in this plan. And obviously the arts and the culture of this community. Um, we know that we have gems in our community when it comes to art and culture. So many people live in this community, work in this community, and there's local artists, there's a thriving artist community. We do not want to see that community displaced. Sorry, eh, I'll, I'll try to translate this part. Eh, no, acaban de informar que están arreglando los traductores, so voy a tratar de decir algunas palabras en español. So as I was saying, art and culture is important. As we look to invest in Inwood, there has to be a part that we make a serious investment in this plan. Where are our theater spaces? Where are our dance studios? Where are our music studios? That is something that we want to continue to see in this plan. And so, um, le queremos dar gracias a la Presidenta del Condado. We want to thank their board for this platform. Um, I would look forward to continuing to work with my colleagues to make sure that at the end of this process, when the City Councilman takes this vote, when Gail Brewer takes this vote, when the Community Board has already spoken, that the the interest of the community is reflected in that plan, and that is the ultimate goal. Le quiero dar las gracias a la Presidenta del Condado y a mis colegas. Espero seguir trabajando con ellos para que las necesidades de esta comunidad sigan siendo reflexionadas en ese plan. Creo que cuando trabajamos unidamente y cuando ponemos la voz de la comunidad eh, como prioridad, se puede lograr mucho. Sabemos que los cambios que están pasando en nuestra comunidad han estado pasando por mucho tiempo. Eso no comenzó hace cuatro años, no comenzó hace dos años, cuando este plan se comenzó. Comenzó mucho antes. Entonces, si vamos a tener un cambio en esta comunidad, creo que las voces de la comunidad tienen que dirigir ese cambio. Así que le doy la gracia por tenerme aquí. Thank you, thank you very much, Sr. Rosa. Uh, lo que tiene el equipo de audífonos para la, la traducción en español, ¿tienen dificultades oyendo la traducción en español? Levanten la mano si tienen. En, en, si se sienten en esta área de...
de aquí hay menos dificultades oyendo la, 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 la traducción en español. So, si se sientan de este lado hacia, hacia adelante, eh, pueden oír la traducción mejor con el equipo. Gracias. Thank you very much. share many of the goals um, that you, and values that you've put forth, and I believe that our approach meets uh, many of these goals. Um, as the folks in this room know, Inwood contains one of the largest concentrations of rent-regulated housing in the city. Um, two of every three homes in this neighborhood are regulated, compared with just one-third citywide. No. Um, the city's population continues to grow, putting pressure on the housing supply citywide, and here in Inwood especially, between 2002 and 2014, Rents in Inwood and Washington Heights increased by 38%, which is more than rents increase citywide in other parts of the city. Under it's by 28%. Tenants, the city's tenant support unit is going door to door in Inwood to inform tenants of their rights, document poor housing conditions, solicit complaints related to harassment and eviction, and make referrals um, to free legal support. Um, in Inwood, they've knocked on 27,000 doors and provided direct assistance to 2,500 tenants. Any Inwood resident in need of legal advice or representation in housing court now has free access to a lawyer. To date, the city has provided over 2,200 Inwood residents with legal assistance. Um, so, really quickly about new construction, uh, the mandatory inclusionary housing um, program in this rezoning area um, will enable growth opportunities and ensure that any new development includes some affordable housing. Um, the rezoning itself is expected to result. The rezoning itself is expected to result in the creation of at least 1,500 permanent affordable homes through the MIH program. Um, the rezoning is also needed to facilitate the creation of a few 100% affordable developments. We recently announced the designation of the Inwood Library um, to a team led by Cloth and the Children's Bill. We complete this project will create 175 deeply affordable homes, the new Inwood Library, universal Christian classrooms, and community programs and services. The project will be owned and managed by nonprofit organizations who have committed to permanent affordability. Uh, another project you're probably familiar with um, is being led by Mad Equities and Joy Construction on privately owned property at 207 Street in the Harlem River. HP is currently working with this team to finance the creation of over 600 affordable homes, community retail, and a publicly accessible waterfront problem. Without the rezoning, these 100% affordable projects would not be possible. Um, I know that I am at time, so I will stop there and I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Michael. And I have just one question um, for to start with the uh, representative of Manhattan Legal Services, and thank you, Mr. Galan, for being here today. My in terms of the kind of housing that you see, how either with or without the rezoning, how do we stop some of the gentrification and keep people in their homes? What would be some of the advice that you would give? Because you have, you're on the line. And I, yes, you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that follow up because I have so much to say. Pages and pages and pages. Sure, <laughs> So to that, I think the resources that are allocated to units like the Tenant Rights Coalition, which does affirmative litigation, right? What I mean by affirmative litigation, I think there are actually some former clients of ours here. We go and we chase down the bad thing, right? So your office and I, we, we coordinated and we learned um, that one landlord bought 13 buildings in one day, right? And they had 360 units. That's way over leverage and they're definitely gonna have to raise the rents. Um, so we need to have resources to chase them down. And when I say resources, I don't just mean attorneys, right? I'm a paralegal, I'm doing the research. We need money for more organizers. We need to be able to support tenant associations. do is they help to ensure 
that housing that is affordable remains permanently affordable by making the land available at low cost to the developers, which in our case we would want not a profit developers or we would want HDFCs. Okay. So they're stewards. Okay. Sure, go ahead. Spanish speaking community. So, uh, well, quickly, because yeah, about so, La Ella está hablando de CLT, de Community Land Trust, que es un programa que es significante y que puede de, en realidad ayudar a nuestra comunidad. Es un programa en que la tierra, el, el valor de la tierra en realidad se lo pone en las manos de la comunidad. O sea, que si vienen eh, personas que tienen eh, ingreso alto, que si cambia eh, el barrio todavía se puede mantener igual porque esa tierra nos pertenece a nosotros y nosotros le damos el valor. Aunque los precios de la tierra eh, en otro espacio eh, suba, en el espacio de nosotros, nosotros controlamos eso. Y por eso es que de verdad, en realidad, como hay alguien que está aquí ahora, a él le debe de decir, nosotros queremos un programa que crea a, a, a Community Land Trust. En realidad no sé decir en español, pero es un programa bien bueno y le, y le quiero decir que cuando lleguen a su casa, que en realidad eh, lo busquen para que aprendan más sobre eso. Thank you. Quickly, because I got so many people. One, one just quick follow-up. Um, one of the things that distinguishes a land trust from, say, a not-for-profit like cloth is that our land trust, we really want it to be community control. The members will be members of the community, it will be led by the community, and decisions will be made by the members who are members of the community. I want to thank this panel very much because we have a business panel coming up, and just uh, in the interim, I'd love to hear a few words from our wonderful council member, Yudanas Rodriguez. de renta asequible 
para los pequeños negociantes. Segundo, que la renta sea asequible para todos los inquilinos. Pero lo más importante es que la persona, con la decencia, con el respeto, se sigan escuchando para mirar cómo podemos escuchar y entendernos todos. Thank you, Manhattan World President. establecí en Diamond eh, tengo más de 40 empleados en mis negocios eh, mi preocupación es, creo que debe ser la de todos los demás dueños de negocios y es que automáticamente eh, como ustedes sabrán la, la calle de Diamond está eh, la, yo diría que el 80% es una estructura de edificio de un nivel y de dos niveles que quiere decir que el, 90, el 80% de nuestro pequeño negocio va a tener que ser desplazado para las nuevas construcciones que vendrán entonces ¿qué pasará cuando llegue el momento de que nuestro contrato de alquiler, nuestro lease eh, se termine nosotros no vamos a poder mantenerlo en nuestro negocio ya eh, como lo hemos estado haciendo, ¿por qué? como ustedes sabrán automáticamente nosotros venga la zonificación, la zonificación en Diamond eso significa que nosotros vamos a tener que pagar más impuestos, vamos a tener que pagar más, eh, más impuestos, va a ser prácticamente los, la renta cuando si lo que podríamos regresar, cosa que yo lo veo muy, muy difícil de que ese proceso en lo que está la construcción sea dos o tres o cuatro años nosotros podemos tener la facilidad de regresar a nuestro negocio porque saben que cuando regresemos si podríamos tener la facilidad vamos a tener que pagar una renta más cara y muchos de nosotros no vamos a poder pagarla no vamos a poder pagar los, los altos impuestos entonces para mí personalmente yo lo veo prácticamente difícil de que la mayoría de nuestro pequeño negocio se pueda mantener en el área. Y por eso yo quiero que se tome en consideración de que nosotros, en el caso mío y casi la mayoría, tenemos más de 30 años en la comunidad que recuerdo que cuando llegué en el 86 en la esquina de Diamond con, con, con Diamond eh, prácticamente esta comunidad o Diamond eh, lo que la gente estaba ahí era emigrando para otros para otra, otro, otros lugares y nosotros paramos eh, paramos lo que es la, 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 la comunidad de Diamond el área y creo que si nosotros permitimos que nos, nos construyan edificios en la calle de Diamond, nosotros estamos puestos a desaparecer. Yo creo que debemos analizarlo muy bien porque no nuestro, nuestra comunidad será, va a desaparecer y no vamos a poder regresar. De verdad que no. Muchas gracias y buenas noches. Okay, uh, Cirilo's uh, remarks. He came here in 1986. Uh, 
30 years ago and established his business, 809 on Dykeman. Um, he reminds people that the majority of the businesses there are one or two levels. He believes that 80% of the businesses would be displaced by aggressive uh, rezoning. Uh, he wants to know what will happen when their leases expire. Uh, rezoning on Dykeman means we must pay more taxes. Uh, those who can return, which I'm skeptical about, uh, but I'm skeptical that the plan could be completed in four years, if we are able to return, we will be able to afford the higher rents and the higher taxes. Uh, for this reason, we ask for consideration, especially for those of us who have been here for so many decades. I remember in 1986 people were leaving, but those of us who stayed rebuilt and restored Dykeman, but now we will disappear. Vengo representando a Broad Diamond Car Service, el negocio de mi padre. Eh, este negocio tiene 40 años dando el servicio a la comunidad. Eh, hemos sido ahora mismo con esta sorpresa de estos bisones no ha afectado eh, porque muchos, porque mucha, um, muchos de nuestros empleados están asustados eh, si sí se piensa ah, va a venir más, más personas atrás a, para la comunidad y va a ser mejor es negativo esto nos va a impactar muchísimo eh, yo soy nacida y criada aquí en Dykeman eh, so, sé que los cambios a veces son buenos pero este cambio lo que va a hacer es afectarnos a todos drásticamente a nosotros ahora mismo tenemos 140 vehículos trabajando 55% son mujeres femeninas trabajando, muchos estudiantes trabajando. Eh, mi papá ya no está en servicio, que representa el negocio de mi papá, es mi hermano. Eh, yo lo apoyo, por eso estoy aquí esta noche. Eh, esto de resonificación no creo que es algo positivo, no le veo nada eh, bueno para los negocios ni también para las personas que viven en la comunidad. Mi papá todavía vive en la comunidad, somos parte de la comunidad y no queremos los cambios. No voy a acabar ese cambio negativo. Mi nombre es Wendy Genau y si saben algo, a mí no me llaman Wendy Genau, sino me llaman Wendy Dykeman porque yo represento Dykeman. Thank you. 
se graba. ¿Ok? Posteriormente, eh, de hecho, fui desalojada. Pero lamentando el caso, yo no me voy del Alto Manhattan. Aquí nacieron mis hijos, aquí viví y aquí me voy a quedar con mi negocio.
continue my work of auto repair right in front of the shop from where from which I was being created. Uh, because as I've said, this is my community, I have the right to be here, and I am not going anywhere.
Rebecca in the zoning, what we are doing is uh, west of 10th Avenue, we are bringing businesses that are operating currently, we are bringing them into conformity. Uh, so there are a number of retail spaces on the ground floor across much of Inwood that are not compliant with zoning. And what we are doing is uh, adding a commercial overlay that will allow those businesses to be in compliance and therefore they won't be, they won't be fined or they won't be displaced uh, as a result of, of their operation. So I just want to close by saying, you know, we, we understand the challenges that you are going through. We are, it is not falling on deaf ears. And we acknowledge that residents and businesses are experiencing change, which creates uncertainty and anxiety. However, action is needed to shape that change in a way that benefits Inwood residents. And the comprehensive neighborhood Inwood plan before you today is a response and proactive strategy to deal with that change um, that we are already experiencing and have been for the last several decades. Thank you. Thank you very much. to 
the needs of the community. Um, the city needs to look around. If you take any train station, the one or the nine, you notice the amount of homeless people we have. Our hospitals is already cutting down beds, and we are bringing possibly 10,000 new residents to England. Uh, Mayor de Blasio, this is not what we want. This is not our vision of New York City. Thank you. staff for holding this public hearing. I also want to thank you for being here. The process did not end at the community board's vote. It, it carries on, and your obligation is to carry on as well. Uh, if you have not seen our resolution, I think many of you have, we passed it on March 20th. It's a 12-page document. It, it, it's detailed. It covers everything that all everyone who's raised a concern is in this document. But I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the community board members in the room. So if you're a community board member, please raise your hand so everyone with who you are. How about a round of applause for the work that was done by these members? This document is a reflection. This, this document is a reflection of the work that was done. We listened to you, we listened to everyone, and this is a reflection of that. Some highlighted points when it comes to affordable housing, whether it's city-owned affordable housing, your sign is 100% affordable. We agreed, 100%, thank you, 100% affordable, but to input resident uh, numbers, not to an average, to what yeah. you're actually seeing here. We talked about the infrastructure, we talked about SBS engaging in with, with our business owners. So please do yourself a favor, this was a not support. I also want to acknowledge, again, um, Wayne Benjamin, our, the architect of this document. This is a not support, but this is a not support as a roadmap. If you want this community support, you'll reach these con conditions. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Now we're going to go two minutes time to start with Lauren Tobias Cohen from the Congressman's office. Two minutes, that's it. These remarks are on behalf of Congressman Adriano Espai. We have an affordability crisis in our city. However, the city's plan, which would only create 1,300 affordable apartments, does not begin to do enough for our upper Manhattan community. With the potential displacement of 6,300 apartments in zip codes 3, 4, and 4, 0 with preferential rents, we need real investments from the city in the creation of affordable housing. That is why I asked the mayor to commit to creating 5,000 new units of affordable housing in Washington Heights in Inwood with a thousand such apartments being dedicated to seniors. I have identified over 15 sites that would be prime locations for the creation of 100% affordable housing, sites that would total roughly 3,500 affordable units. These sites would not be MIH style buildings with 75% of the apartments being market rate. They would be 100% affordable. We need a strong commitment from this administration and the local elected officials to build additional affordable housing to ensure a rezoning will truly benefit current residents. In addition, I have strong opposition to the current plan to upzone the commercial view. This proposed rezoning will likely directly displace dozens of small businesses from 809 Restaurant to local grocery stores such as Seatown as developers come in to build predominantly market rate housing. Businesses will close during construction, and if they're still afloat and want to move back after, the rents will be significantly higher. We need to ensure that the businesses and community members who built up this community are able to stay in this community, and we need new affordable housing so that they can afford to live here, such as working class families and middle class families, many of whom stuck it out here during the decades when Washington Heights was synonymous with the city's crack and drug epidemic. Thank you. Time is up. Thank you very much. My name is Robert Joseph from the Municipal Arts Society of New York. NIS has been encouraged by the Input NYC Action Plan that framed the rezoning proposal, in particular recommendations for affordable housing at the Inwood Library site, support for tenants' rights, investment in infrastructure, and support of neighborhood businesses through grant programs. However, we are very concerned about the potential for low-income residents to be displaced, the gentrification of retail establishments, and the potential long-term effects future, future development will have on cultural and natural resources. 
While Inwood is a hub of Dominican culture today, with shops and restaurants catering, catering to the local Dominican population, incoming residents are unlikely to demand the same retail opportunities. MAS asks that these factors be addressed in the rezoning and evaluated in the EIS, along with specific protection measures to prevent, to the extent practicable, indirect business displacement. We have significant questions about how the rezoning would affect school capacity in the area. With an enrollment of 7,800 students, <coughs> elementary schools in Community School District 6 are already at 101% capacity. However, according to the draft environmental impact statement, enrollment will decrease to 5,000 by 2032, a drop off of over 2,700 students in the next 14 years. Although New York City Department of Education enrollment projections indicate that enrollment will fall in the future, further explanation of this projection is needed. While we, add, uh, while we support the creation of over 100 affordable units at the library site, we would like the city to explore adding more library space to accommodate the large number of new residents that, will move, that would move into the new neighborhood. A new library would be less than 1,000 square feet larger than the old library, and we're concerned that the new space will not, not be sufficient to serve the increased population of the neighborhood. Uh, in addition, the Inwood area has a potential trove of archaeological resources. In fact, an archaeological study conducted as part of the DEIS revealed that there are 16 projected or potential development sites in the rezoning area that may contain archaeological artifacts. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Your time is perfect.
Okay, so what I wanted to say is these children, they're ready to move out, they don't have a place to, 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 to go, and we as a family need to make sure that we make the right decision for them. So, um, so we need to really, um, I think they hear the, um, the resonance is an opportunity, an opportunity for them. So we need to make the right decision, approve this resonance so we can have more affordable housing. And this is, we need to do this for the family, for our children, and as, as the same for our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Yvonne Stennett, Executive Director of Community League of the Heights, and this is Jeremy Coavon, President and CEO of Children's Village. We are here this evening as the proud members of the team that was selected for the New York City, by New York City HVD and the New York Public Library to redevelop the N1 Library. Our team consisting of the Community League of the Heights, Olympic Community Development, the Children's Village, and range of properties jointly possess over 200 years of experience and excellence in human service community development and the provision of affordable housing and construction in Hamilton Heights, Washington Heights, Inland, and throughout New York. Our team enthusiastically responded to the request for proposal to develop the Inwood Library issued by New York City HPD and the New York Public Library with a strong desire and commitment to realize a project that responded to the needs expressed by residents of the Inwood community. We recognize that this project demonstrates the city's commitment to make significant financial and resource investments in, in the Inwood community, and so we are truly honored to have been chosen to develop the site. Concurrently, we are grateful for the opportunities provided through the proposed Inwood rezoning and the overall Inwood action plan. The plan establishes the conditions to create new units of 100% how affordable housing utilizing city sites with community facility space to provide much needed community programming including early education, child care, job training, technical, and adult education. The ELISA, the name chosen for the Inwood Library project, Time. 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 Thank you. My name is Angela Fernandez, and I'm the Executive Director and Supervising Attorney in the Northern Manhattan Coalition for Immigrant Rights. The Northern Manhattan Coalition for Immigrant Rights is the longest-running immigration-related legal services and education organization in Upper Manhattan. Since its inception, over 35 years ago, we've served over 150,000 immigrants. The average person we serve is a working female head of household between the ages of 36 and 65, whose median income is $15,000 to $20,000 a year. The majority are immigrants who were displaced from their countries by economic and political powers greater than their own. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of our community's members moved to Inwood seeking stability and agency over their own destinies. As an organization, we have questions about how the Inwood rezoning will allow these women and their family members to continue to maintain stability and agency over their own destinies. It is unfortunate that the timing of their arrival, of the arrival of many of our immigrant neighbors, was off by about four decades. As cited in the policy brief, when a neighborhood becomes a revolving door for Dominicans, published by the Dominican Studies Institute, New York City's best housing and development policies that responded to the needs of the people were enacted after World War II, at a time when the city invested, truly invested in its 
its, in its working class and by implementing regulations such as rent, rent control and other regulations that allow the working the middle class to live in dignity. A rezoning strategy must prioritize the needs of our working poor, our middle class, our small business owners, the majority of whom are immigrants who have been living here for decades. We do not have to go far into our own history to look at successful policies that should either be strengthened or revived. If we are truly a sanctuary city, then let us apply that concept and ensure that changes in zoning and in development priorities do not, in effect, deport our neighbors from our city. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Brother Anthony Zuba. I'm a pastoral associate at Church of the Good Shepherd. And both Father Almonte and I are here as representatives of the Upper Manhattan Interfaith Leaders Coalition. Thank you. Our Judeo-Christian tradition provides us the biblical mandate against unfair rent. As it says in the book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 11, You trample the poor stealing their grain through taxes and unfair rent. Therefore, though you build beautiful stone houses, you will never live in them. The Upper Manhattan Interfaith Leaders Coalition has studied both the EDC rezoning plan as well as the alternative plan from Uptown United. And we respectfully express our concern that the EDC rezoning plan in its current form will accelerate rather than mitigate displacement and gentrification. Three points. We are particularly concerned about the lack of meaningful community engagement in the planning process and we're concerned, we're concerned about the criteria used to define affordable housing in the city plan. Two, the affordability levels offered through mandatory inclusionary housing are not affordable to the majority of our congregants. Point three, point three, we are also concerned about the lack of a plan for infrastructure improvements to accommodate thousands of new residents in a community already underserved by the decaying infrastructure. So despite the EDC efforts to inform the community, many of our congregants still do not have a clear understanding of the city plan. We're particularly concerned about this because members of our congregations make up over 10,000 residents of northern Manhattan. And so we recommend four the five points. One, invest in development of truly affordable housing through additional city subsidies and tax incentives for deeper affordability. Two, protect the existing rent regulated housing time, time, sir. For okay. and rent laws. Okay. And we'll submit the rest of our testimony to you. Sorry we couldn't finish this testimony. We're not opposed in principle to development, but we urge you to consider community input. Fifty 
50% of tenants in CB12 are rent burdened, according to the Association for Neighborhood Housing and Development. With this real estate change, 9,200 present preferential rent tenants will be impacted, as landlords will be incentivized to seek loopholes to increase their rents by hundreds of dollars. Also, according to the 2018 Rent Guidelines Board Income and Affordable My name is Eli Weiss. I'm a representative from Man Equities. We are planning and hopefully going to be developing a project in this neighborhood that is 100% affordable. This is my fourth time speaking in front of your community board, and I uh, enjoy my time here. I mostly enjoy seeing how engaged this community is. I've spoken before your full community board, before your housing committee, uh, at the environmental scoping hearing, and I'm just here to reiterate our company's uh, pledge to develop our site as 100% affordable housing to go beyond MIH, which only requires 25 to 30% affordable, that our project will be 100% affordable housing. And it's something that's easy to say and pledge, but if you've looked at the past rezonings that our company has been involved in in the past, We've lived up to our pledge every single time. We've not speculated on the land and sold it. We've not pledged to build affordable and then build market rate. We've built every single rezoning that we initiated or were a part of, and we built it all affordable. I understand that this rezoning is much larger and much broader than our project. And I truly hope that the best outcome for this community comes true, because we've made an investment in it, not only in the property, but by partnering with a current resident of the community, Carlos Gomez. And we truly want to see this project come to fruition, be built, be affordable, and be a value add. Our, our affordable rents go well lower than what have been discussed tonight. And I urge everybody to look at all of the programs on the city's website that have affordable rents for people even as low as 30% of the area median income, which we've committed to build units at those levels as well. So I thank you for the opportunity to speak, and I wish you guys all good luck in this process. Thank you very much. Over here, sir. Thank you. I'm Paul Epstein, an Inwood resident. I've already submitted written testimony to you on many rezoning topics. I want to focus my time now on how EDC's community engagement has been a total scam. EDC always points to two years of engagement they say and form their plan. That's a complete sham. They knew what they wanted long before they made their plans public. Then they released their plans drip by drip, telling us each piece was in response to the community as if each piece was new. But just look at this map from EDC's EIS consultant January 2016 proposal. It's clear that EDC already had the waste by Steichman upzoning, part of the upland core, and the commercial U upzoning in their sites at least 17 months before they showed it to the community. The community response to the community board meeting was unanimously against the upland core boundaries and the upzoning of the commercial U. But, they, but did they come back to community groups to try to understand our objections and collaborate on a creative compromise? No. With no further engagement, one month later, they locked in that plan and said that's what's going to Euler and that was that. All their talk of community engagement was phony. Instead of making any attempt to collaborate with the community, they approached engagement as a power play. EDC controlled the information flow that the community had to react, then react again, and in the end, the community was not allowed to make any difference that mattered. Giving the community a voice was never the point. It was all a sham, because EDC totally disrespected the community. You have no choice but to vote no and tell them to come back when they're ready to collaborate with us. Thank you very much.
Good evening. My name is Val Rinelli, and I am an Inwood resident and member of several groups in support of the Uptown United Platform. Over a lifetime of visiting my mother in this neighborhood, and now living here myself, I have borne witness to the slow but increasingly evident dismemberment of our community. My building has lost many long-term residents and has almost no children. Many occupants are transient, generating vacancy bonuses for the landlord and not participating in the community. This is the gentrification process in action, and now is the time to work to protect our community, not hasten its demise. Under the city's proposal, the majority of development would occur along specified commercial corridors, displacing most of our small businesses. According to Leo Goldberg's 2015 MIT study, this type of rezoning results in the highest levels of displacement of communities of color and people of all races making below $25,000 per year. Furthermore, EDC's assessment of the potential impacts of the rezoning is vastly inadequate. At a recent community board presentation, EDC stated that under numerous categories, findings indicated no or minimal significant adverse impacts. We live here every day and have studied this proposal at every step and can assure you that this is simply false. Uptown United's platform aims to create an alternative rezoning process, which involves the community and caters to its needs, preserves existing housing, creates truly affordable, community-controlled housing, protects small businesses, and fortifies our infrastructure. Borough President Brewer, we have seen you at so many local community events, so we know we must matter to you. Tonight, we call on you to represent us, support us at the Uptown United plan, not because it is the politically popular thing or the seemingly winning thing, but because it is the right thing. And yes to Uptown United. Nick 
Lynn then just to get started. Go ahead, sir. Hi, my name is Peter Sathis. The proposed zoning is an effective and efficient solution to our city's housing crisis. Inwood's rent suffers are faster than the other neighborhood over the last decade, and the 200 new units constructed over that time is not enough to satisfy demand. Existing zoning prohibits any residential housing over large parts of Inwood. Inwood has the equivalent of over 20 football fields of parking lots and warehouses. The mechanic shop on 218 and 10th Avenue has been vacant for over 15 years, and the warehouse behind it for even longer. We have a great opportunity here to create housing and well-paying jobs for Inwood residents. This, rezone, this proposed rezoning is an incredibly efficient way to create permanently affordable housing. Market rate units can subsidize the construction and maintenance of the affordable ones. It is incredibly expensive to build in the city, and failing to allow enough market rate development would discourage residential development from starting in the first place. There is no additional funds for NYCHA on public housing, and the agency in charge of it in Washington is not interested in giving us any more funding. A failure to rezone Inwood would reinforce the near monopoly existing landlords enjoy. Without competition from new development, they can raise rents with impunity. Besides housing, the proposed rezoning creates the opportunity for office space. The existing lack of office space discourages the creation and expansion of local businesses. If an Inwood resident starts a business in their kitchen, they shouldn't have to leave Inwood to expand. The fastest and most efficient way to create affordable housing is to mix it in with market rate units. Nonprofit developers and community land trusts do not have the capacity to meet demand. It is important to keep in mind that we cannot push more affordable housing and aggressively restrict density. Thank you. People will move to where they want to. Displacement happened in Parks Road, Bushwick, and Astoria without a rezoning. Astoria was not rezoned and people were displaced. To show for it. Families are doubling up. Time. 
will replace them with wealthy, largely white outsiders. Thank you very much. will not remain a Dominican stronghold. Thank you very much. Mr. Guerrero, Stephen Ventura, Nathaniel Green. Go right ahead. Sí, muy buenas noches. Uh, mi nombre es Julia Guerrero. Yo he sido maestro de la Escuela 28 por, 20, por más de 24 años. También soy miembro del Frente Amplio. Nosotros nos oponemos al plan de desarrollo que la alcalde Luis de Blasco, el concejal Daniel Rodríguez, intenta llevar a cabo en la comunidad de Inwood. Este plan, mejor conocido como la desunificación de Inwood, tendrá consecuencias muy negativas para la comunidad dominicana, mexicana, puertorriqueña, afroamericana y los trabajadores blancos que viven en nuestra vecindad. En los últimos años hemos sido víctimas de un desarrollo sistemático y legal que los caseros han ejecutado tanto en Inwood como en Washington Heights. Más de 20.000 dominicanas y dominicanas han sido forzadas a mudarse a otras comunidades como el Bronx, Londres, New Jersey, Pensilvania y Boston, porque no podían pagar las rentas por los apartamentos en Inwood y en Washington Heights. Ahora, Bill de Blasio, el llamado progresista, y Danis Rodríguez, otro que se llama progresista, y la señora Carol Blumer, quieren de nuevo desalojar a miles de dominicanos y dominicanas con la más llamada personificación en Inwood. Este plan traerá nuevos edificios de lujos. Los inversionistas de Wall Street, los ricos, serán los dueños de estos nuevos edificios. Los dominicanas y dominicanas no podrán pagar las nuevas rentas que se cobrarán en los nuevos apartamentos. Y los pequeños negocios de latinos serán desalojados y serán desplazados por la cadena grande de negocios. La diversidad de la comunidad se perderá porque gran número de los dominicanos y dominicanas seremos sacados de Inwood. Por todas estas razones, los miembros del, del Frente Amplio que viven en Inwood se oponen a este plan de desarrollo y estamos listos para defender a los dominicanos y dominicanas que viven en Inwood. Okay, Mr. Guerrero is, is a teacher at PS98. Uh, he has been there for, 20, for 24 years. He is also a member of Frente Amplio. His remarks are about the plan that is put together for the rezoning of Inwood by Mayor Bill de Blasio and Councilman Idanis Rodriguez will have a negative impact on the Dominicans, the Mexicans, and all Latinos in this community. In recent years, 20,000 Dominicans have been forced to move out of Upper Manhattan to the Bronx, to Boston, elsewhere. Uh, these uh, so-called progressives, Mr. de Blasio, Ilan Rodriguez, Gail Moore, seek to displace us yet again. Uh, Dominicans cannot afford new rents under the new rezoning plan. Latino businesses will be forced to leave. We will all be forced to leave the community. Thank you very much. So Mr. Ventura, Mr. Green, uh, April Rodriguez, and Luisa Perez. Anybody, any of those folks here? All right. Uh, Nora Lucero, Stuart Davison Trips, Aaron Sims. Come on down. Aaron, I see you. I want to thank also Robert Jackson, the district leader, former council member, for being here tonight. District leader Manny uh, Rosento, and Joanna Garcia, who's president of CDC 6. Go right ahead, sir. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Abel Rodriguez. Yo vivo aquí, eh, trabajo aquí, tengo mi oficina en Broadway, eh, 4967 de Broadway, en el centro, un centro operativo, y también a uh, Denis Pablo de México. Uh, pero qué desgracia, ¿verdad? Qué desgracia que esta comunidad que, que ya de por sí está pasando por una situación muy caótica. El 90% de los pequeños negocios de nosotros está sometido a una serie, a un chantaje 
falla, una extorsión. Extorsión es una palabra legal, es un delito, pero parece que para la comunidad de nosotros ya eso no es delito. Eh, el, el 99% de nuestro negocio no puede ni a un banco a tomar un préstamo. Vivimos en una ciudad que está por encima de, de nuestras posibilidades. Y encima de eso, pues vienen y nos plantean un plan muy bonito, pero es un plan disfrazado, porque los políticos, y vamos a hablar claro, todos los políticos saben que ese plan está inscrito dentro de lo que se llama la gentrificación, que no es más que cuando los ricos necesitan los espacios de los pobres.
into the hands of who? They're not here. So why do we care? The discrepancy between the schedule of affordable rents in the plan as it's laid out currently and the median income in the area is enough to make this clear as day, but, you know, is this proposal even being made in good faith? At this point, I don't, you know, I, I can't see what it is. There's alternatives to the agenda. Uptown United has laid out a clear and community-oriented alternative to this plan as it exists. Um, it's already been vetted that all of these ideas have been integrated into one central location. It creates truly affordable housing. It works to sustain and nurture the dreams of this community rather than remake those dreams in the image of capitalist land bearers. I'm the Bronx Upper Manhattan chapter of the Democratic Socialists of America urge you to vote no on the Inwood MSC plan and to please consider the unified Inwood plan in its stead. Thank you. Thanks to climate change. 
but they want to upzone it anyway, instead of installing flood buffers and parkland along the Hudson River. Instead of doing environmental studies like we asked for, EDC blew us off. They don't give a darn about environmental impacts. The process is backwards. EDC and the city are pushing the rezoning plan through, and the EIS is an afterthought and meaningless. The fact that they made up their minds about the huge buildings on our commercial streets years ago. See, we recommend that the ULR for the inward rezoning be halted because of the corrupted process. They need to first analyze all the environmental infrastructure and social impacts and then start designing a plan of action, not the other way around. The future of inward depends on a time and good faith data-based analysis, not the frequency. Thank you very much. Good evening, my name is David Munoz. I am in, an Indian resident and I am a member of 32BJ, the largest property service union in the country. Our union fights for racial, climate, climate and economic justice in our communities. And we represent nearly 2,000 members in Inwood alone. Tell to be BJ believes that responsible development with affordable housing and good jobs will allow neighborhoods like Inwood to remain a diverse place to working people to continue calling home. Several local property owners have committed to providing good jobs, their future development site, the, the prevailing wages include family sustained wages and benefits and its mirror very to be gained industry standard. We applaud those owners for working to ensure that this reasoning benefits the community as much as possible. For this reason, we hope the board of residents will support responsible development with good jobs and affordable housing in Inwood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mendez, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who's coming here tonight. Uh, my name is Graham Stuello. I've been with more than Manhattan. It's not for sale. I'm an Inwood resident. Um, my testimony uh, was very different when I woke up this morning, but then I read today's Daily News, which outlines uh, the de Blasio's uh, meetings with James Capolino and his clients. Uh, $100,000 was paid to Mayor de Blasio to meet in the basement of a restaurant with 10 real estate developers. Okay. Capolino operates in our neighborhood. One of their representatives was here tonight. Taconic hires them. Taconic owns the plot where the Associated is. Okay, they are creating fake community coalitions in our neighborhood, tricking residents into supporting the rezoning. We have to stand up. This plan is immoral. It's born out of corruption, just like the whole plan, the whole de Blasio housing agenda. We have an obligation to oppose it. Yeah. It all may be a bad thing, maybe it will lead to gentrification. Luckily, we provided an alternative. The Uptown United plan, and we ask that you support it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, Madam President. My name is Avi Derelik. I'm a resident of Washington Heights of eight years and um, a member of Faith in New York. Um, as a great grandson of Jewish immigrants, uh, I can attest that the Jewish community here in New York as immigrants uh, were supported uh, in building economic and political power and uh, attaining um, a, a flourishing. Um, and we want the um, Dominican community and other immigrants uptown to be afforded the same 
opportunity. This plan needs to be built. The EDC's plan is the house built upon the sand. 
It may look nice, but without the solid foundation of a community, part of the literal construction of the plan, it will fall. We hope you'll join us in being part of that foundation to plan wisely and withstand the elements together for many years to come. To close, French Catholic activist Madeleine Delbrel said, quote, we, the ordinary people of the streets, believe with all our might that this street, this world, where God has placed us, is our place of holiness. Madam President, Northern Manhattan is more than an investment property or a site for development and profit. It is a community. Help us maintain our place of holiness in Northern Manhattan. Thank you very much. Buenas noches y gracias por estar aquí apoyándonos. Eh, estoy representando también a la Iglesia de San Judas. Estoy aquí desde 1980 y mi familia vinieron en los 70 y no nos queremos ir de este eh, vecindario.
as I've traveled the city, these rezonings basically mean that we allow developers to build bigger density, taller buildings, and they want to do that. And what we've said to them is if you build smaller, taller buildings, you're going to have to give us affordable housing. The problem is, and this is based on our analysis in our office, the affordable housing is not affordable for the people in these communities. The notion that if we build these 30 story luxury buildings, we are going to affect the people who build Washington Heights. And that is just unfortunately where we are. There's a better way to build affordable housing. It's the way LaGuardia did it with NYCHA. It's the way the Mitsubishi housing stock was built. We have 1,150 vacant properties in the city that taxpayers own. to the Bronx, to El Barrio. This is playing out in every single community. It's, it, it's no longer, it's no longer to one neighborhood. It is a citywide issue. If you look at the vacant stores, as Gail has documented, this is going to happen citywide if we don't rethink how we're building our land, how we're building the next generation of housing. And I respectfully say to all of you, there is a citywide coalition that is forming. You are the leaders of it. And I was coming back from the Bronx tonight. I have no paper. I'm not sending out a press release. But I was passing the neighborhood. And I said, if I don't get into this meeting tonight and say something, there's something wrong with me. Thank you.
Zadek. Good evening. My name is Sherry Montazir. I'm a 43-year resident of Inwood. I attended the CB12 Land Use Committee meeting where the Inwood Library plan was presented by HPD and their team. The process is being rushed because of an artificially imposed timeline and purpose. Instead of creating what could be an asset to the community, rushing this large-scale project through has great potential of becoming a fiasco, or as our Congressman Adriano Espaya dubbed it, a Trojan horse. The library project deserves its own humor. It should not be treated as an incidental byproduct of the input result. of a library, affordable housing, and a pre-K, all with their own characteristics, needs, and entrances. Also, within the space, there will be a myriad of community programs competing for usage. When CB12 members critique the certain aspects of the structure and the plan that were incongruent with the neighborhood's character, the architect alluded to the fact that they had done the best they could in the time allotted. This is no way to execute a plan that will have such a tremendous impact on our community. I urge you to vote no for the plan and support the end of the Thank you very much. Next. Good evening and thank you for President Brewer. My name is Phil. Simpson. Um, 15, I'm too going to speak about the library proposal. 15, thank you, Ava. 15 months ago, I asked Councilmember Rodriguez, I don't remember, see if he's still here, I asked him point blank if he could guarantee that the community would not lose any library services if this library proposal went forward. Our council member, your council member, did not answer the question. And today that question still has not been answered. NYPL says they would have so-called core services, checking out books, signing up for computers, speaking with a librarian. But 15 months after this proposal was announced, they also said that they don't have a location, they don't have a budget. I'll come back to budget. They said that the many other important services that people in this community use at the library, they're going to scatter some of them around the community. They don't know which, and they don't know where. This is not a plan, it's not even a promise, and it's certainly not something that the people of this community can rely on not to be deprived of a real library for five or more years. They said there was not a budget, so let's think about a budget. At the low end, you've heard from many business owners here, they'll tell you rent in Inwood is about $50 a square foot a year. The library is 17,000 square feet. To replace that, you're talking about rent alone over $800,000 a year. Five years, that's over $4 million in rent. But they don't have a budget. Do you think that they're going to spend $4 million on an interim library? I don't think there's anybody in this room that thinks that or that could trust them to deliver on that. It's not sound policy to trust them, not when they don't have a plan, a location, a budget, and they have to spend real money to deliver. Time. Oh, thank, no. Thank you very much. So, Leah Holtzel, Carla Cruz, uh, Bennett, uh, Malza, and Catherine O'Sullivan. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm speaking for Leah. Okay, take me away. So I'm Nancy Preston. I'm a 17 year resident of Inwood, a community activist, advocate and activist, and a member of too many CBOs on the list. You may also know me as a yoga teacher for Bread and Yoga, and that's one of our beloved local small businesses that are at risk of displacement. The Inwood rezoning plan is deeply flawed. It's top down, and it should be bottom up. After being dumped on and disinvested for decades, the city wants to invest in Inwood at a price that is exploitive. The design and scale of the rezoning will result in displacement of residents.
residents and businesses. Public assets will be given away and landowners will see the value of their property appreciate exponentially, incentivizing teardowns and flipping. People must come before profit. England has observed, absorbed more than its fair share of uh, housing, the sanitation garage, the bus depot, the Time Warner Spectrum, parking, the rail yards, Con Ed. Now's the time to give back some of that land for 100% permanent inward affordable housing. That's contextual and also include the much needed community space we lack. There's a great opportunity to right the wrongs done to Inwood. An ethical and practical long-term plan that will benefit the people must be put in place. This is all put forth in the Uptown United platform. This is the plan that I ask you to support, Madam Borough President. What is the role of our government but to be visionary and to be humane? It can be done, it will be remembered, and I ask that you find the political will to save Inwood, to say no to the EDC plan,
blends well with Inwood's Art Deco buildings. The Inwood Library proposal as a conveyance of public land qualifies for an independent EULA. It is too important a decision to be buried in the larger Inwood rezoning. Give our library the attention it deserves. If the RFP for the library stated that a zoning of R8 should be assumed, why are we here? How is the rezoning in any way democratic if a predetermined outcome is already assumed? The greenest building is the one that already exists. Reject the EDC plan. Thank you. Build a library elsewhere. Thank you very much. Um, I lived in England for 21 years and before that, Washington Heights. Um, I want to, since um, people have spoken eloquently, Idanis, can you stay for one second, please? Idanis, can you stay for one second? Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity um, to say to you, we fought together at City College um, to save um, a free and quality education. We did not fight for private universities to give a small percent promises to a small percentage of people to um, to get an education. Uh, we need leaders that are going to be strong now and not compromise. You know this plan is a, this plan is a lie. It's a it's a short term it's a short gap solution. It is not a long term solution for this neighborhood, and it's only going to lead to more displacement. I know that you do work um, for tenants, and we need more of that. We need to roll back rents. We need to roll back. that H people from 
HPD, people from the EDC, and even yourself in your letter to the EDC where you, you express your concerns. You express your concerns, however, the, re re the, the proposals that are set up to try to help businesses and to help tenants are pathetic and will not work at all. One of the, just as an example, one proposal is establishing a business incubator. You know what that is? That's a business that then help, that then advises businesses. Do our little businesses need advice? They know damn well that they're going to be displaced. So paying a, another business uh, incubator is not going to help. An enhanced commercial corridor that helped, that supposedly helped the Upper West Side. The Upper West Side
We need to embrace one another in the spirit of this great experiment called New York, which proclaims at the very feet of the lady in the harbor, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. It is not a cry to sell the land to the highest bidder. Let us stand together to resist that force and to determine our own future here, not from the top down, but from the grassroots up. Let us be united uptown. And I want to end with just a few lines from Salme Moreña de Enrique from her poem, En Defensa de la Sol Sociedad. Ah, this is in English. I hope the translation is good. Not everything is vice and confusion and horrors in the social tumult. Beyond this veil of sin and error, genius leaves its trace of light and the eternal way of praising the good and lauding virtue. And this is man's sublime mission, to put the dense shadows of error to flight, to bear the light of reason and time. time. Thank you very much. Ignorance. Thank you. Owls in gloom. Thank you very much. Like our votes will make a difference when it's not. 
This library plan was already sold underneath us and it was wrong. I'm here to tell you that the community is not here because they're immigrants. You know they're immigrants. You know they're scared to come here. Look at Trump. They didn't vote for him. They would fill up this auditorium three times alone. Just one public school in the area of Dykeman. One. Why don't they come? Because they would outnumber the wealthy people that are buying up the land that they're fighting for. They're fighting for that because education is the only key to be able to fight what's going on here. This is a chess game and we do have a chance. We are here to say that we are not giving up the library. You will not take the library for the children that are depending on it, that tomorrow they're waking up for a state exam that requires their school to have funding. These schools are bilingual. Every child deserves to be bilingual. Where do you think they get the services at? This public library that you are going to dismiss for years, what's going to happen to that generation? A lot of you don't really understand because your children don't go to that school. My children go to that school. I've transferred my children in the five years that I've lived in Dykeman to three different public schools. Each school having an issue with funding, with these state exams. So now you're closing the library. What are these families going to do? They're not here to speak out of fear. It's only out of fear. And it's not fair what you're doing. So I'm here to let you know that just because they're not coming in here doesn't mean we're not giving up a fight. No, we're not fighting with violence. We're fighting with knowledge. And one way or another, you will not take our library phones. Bottom line.
introduce Jennifer Bristol. Thank you so much for hosting this um, hearing here in this part of Midwood. That's what I want to talk about. Um, I've been coming to meetings and the southern part of Midwood, um, south of Diagonal, north of Hillside, has been left out of the equation. And I know that you, the EDC went back and included West of Broadway because there was discussion that that was vulnerable and they wanted the character to stay that way. Well, this section is very vulnerable and no one's talking about that. And that hasn't been um, studied in impact study. No one's been talking about that much. I know I think, Gail, you've mentioned it in the past, but no one's mentioned it tonight, so that's all I want to do is bring it back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Naima Silver. I have been living here for pretty much my entire life. Uh, I agree with pretty much what the rest of the community has had to say, so I want to propose something different. Uh, I want us to consider that, number one, we're aware that rezoning will have long-term effects on the community, right? So why are we rushing through this process? That's number one. I would like to propose that we vote no. Number two, that a moratorium is established for maybe five or six years, and we take the time to analyze how rezoning has impacted other communities around the city, and that, we, and that we see, after gathering the data, if the rezoning has actually delivered on the, on the different aspects that it said that it was going to do in those communities. And so if that has been the case, then after that moratorium, five or six years, we can open it up again so that uh, a, a proposal, a new proposal would have to be done from scratch, taking into consideration the over 65% majority of the community that was not included in the very beginning of the process, which is the Spanish-speaking Latino community, and I know that because I attended many of the meetings in 2015 and 2016, there were no translators like they have now, uh, the material was always in English. So ultimately, how about we vote no, establish a moratorium, analyze uh, how rezoning has impacted other communities, and then we see if this is going to be best for us. Because since it will have long-term effects, we should not be doing short-term things. We should take our time and just really analyze it. But thank you very much. Hi, my name, uh, my name is Dave Tom. I speak tonight on behalf of the Inwood Owners Coalition. So this must be the fifth or sixth or twentieth time that a room full of people has given very strong, constructive input on what the city proposes to do to our neighborhood, only to find out afterward that nothing changes. The city never modifies their proposal. We just move from packed room to packed room and repeat ourselves. And for those of us old enough to remember records, it feels like a broken record. So here we go again. Simply put, the proposed rezoning is far too aggressive. It needlessly ramps up building size and density while offering very little to those who already live here, whether it be affordability, small business health, or quality of life. A modified plan with less aggressive zoning could accomplish many of the stated goals without causing so many problems. And it could also throw in some new infrastructure, community center, police precincts, to help accommodate the new and existing population, which I'll point out, through the change in the zoning map, enables up to 46,000 people, although the city projects that there will be only 14,000 people. Uh, but no matter what we say, the city doesn't modify their plan. It hasn't changed since it was released, despite the very cheerful talk about hearings. And believe me, we've tried to suggest alternatives in the workshops, the hearings, the written comments, etc. And so it falls to those involved in the Euler process, in this case, President Brewer, to vote no in order to encourage the city to come back to us with a better plan, with less density, more benefits, less politics, and more planning. Thank you. Hello, my name is Chris Nickel, and I'm a resident of Inwood. Um, I want to thank the Borough President for staying with us all this time. We may end up with lunch. Um, the things that I want to address tonight are not as popular as some of the other issues, but I think they're very crucial. 
crucial. The first is infrastructure. Um, as our dearly departed friend OB Bing constantly reminded us at CB12, we have some of the oldest self-service infrastructure in the entire country in this neighborhood. And I think it's just a simple point to make that no, no rezoning, no redevelopment should be allowed to take place before these infrastructural deficiencies are addressed. And that can be as dangerous as the paper covered wires that cause an entire citywide brownout this coming summer if it's a hot one. So I think we all have reason to be concerned. And the second related issue that I want to talk about is environmental racism. Um, this plan, the EDC plan, says it's about affordable housing. If we take it at its word and think about the increased density that it's calling for along the Harlem River, well, that's a floodplain. And that's a 100-year floodplain now, but in 15 years, at the end of their reasonable worst-case development scenario, that very well could be a 5, 10, 15-year floodplain. And to put all those people needing affordable housing in those units that are the most vulnerable to these kinds of natural disasters is not just irresponsible, it's racism. And so we need to address these issues now before it's too late. So I ask that you vote no on the EDC plan as it currently stands and support the time you Thank you. And then Barbara Di Pietro and Anna uh, Melendez. Go ahead, sir. Yes, uh, green, uh, we should. Girl, Robert, I know you for a long, long time. I try to always we work with you because I feel you have. Uh, progresses a vision for a municipal in your city. But I want you to bring it to us, to this community, this plan. I ask to me, what happened? I don't know. I don't know if you lose to your vision about progress, about justice and respect for this community. I'm listening. Because, you know, it's confusing to me. I want to listen to you say now. If you have confused, yes or no? This is my question. Second, let me ask something. When you come to, to borrow president, you were selected four years ago. I spoke to you in front a city hall about to, to person and duty. Uh, Mr. Bonilla, what I said, you and Mr. Bonilla, I feel you and work for this community. What's in the mind? What's I evil? And, and what's I to all, 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 all open no to, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, confusing for me. Uh, but what's in the mind? Ingo and Hamilton play. Now, I saw the people in Ingo fight for, for the home, for this community. This community is important for us. You know how long we live over here? 40 years. I have a four boy. All my sons, Ronnie, and all of them over here. All, everybody knows my family. But thank you, my son. No, no, my son. Good evening all. My name is Ana Rosario and I'm an Inwood 
Sylvester, and I'm a member of Manhattan Time for Sale. I want you to vote no on the Inglewood NYC plan and adopt the upcoming national taxing for the following reasons. Affordability being one of the primary issues. This plan makes no promise for deeply affordable units, but introduces a high amount of luxury or market units, which we take no, uh, if we take no, Williamsburg to Sony has put those both in per with preferential rent and rent stabilization at risk. Let's be clear, we know that there is no housing crisis. Housing is available, however, it is the issue of affordability that makes it inaccessible. What we need is deeply affordable housing, and this plan does not offer this. Instead, it would do the opposite. It would separate gentrification and expose the community to a host of public health issues that require further studies before a decision is made. As a clinical social worker serving folks in gentrifying neighborhoods, I have observed an increased trauma related to lack of affordable housing, displacement of long-time residents and immigrants, mental health episodes, including depression and anxiety, as a disruption of the social ties people once had to their community. The comfort of having affordable housing creates stability and a sense of comfort that many people in these neighborhoods are being denied. As a result, we see the cycles of violence and increased crime becoming more prevalent because people are experiencing feelings of hopelessness with no one in sight. While there's no formal study that tests this, my decade of experience has allowed me the opportunity to observe this firsthand. In my organizing, I find that newcomers are not always aware of cultural norms of the community and do not always represent a willingness to learn. People need to feel at home in their community, as for many, many, this is a first experience. Oh, wait, wait. First appearance in this melting pot of Poland, America. This is what the Dominican residents have come to see in Inwood as a hub of Dominican immigrants, such as myself, who have come to see Inwood as a home away from home. Imagine living in a community that represents your culture and speaks, your, and speaks to your experience, to then have it taken away, and once again, you're a stranger in a foreign land, depressed, anxious, isolated. Once again, you're colonized. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, good evening. My name is Fitzroy Christian. I'm not from Manhattan. I'm from the Bronx, just over the river. I'm a member of CASA, and I'm on the steering committee of the Bronx Coalition for Community Vision. I came here in solidarity with you, my friends. Helping much of what we wanted in the Bronx, but what we have come to realize is that the fight is just beginning. But we want to fight with you because if we don't fight on a citywide basis, we are all going to be part of our neighborhoods five years from now. I would not be able to come across the bridge and see my friends here in northern Manhattan. You will not be able to come over the waters and see us in the southwest Bronx. We will party and we boogie and we dance and we have fun and we play dominoes together. That is going to be gone if we don't fight together. It is not Manhattan, it is not the southwest Bronx. It has to be a citywide fight. And what we have to do is to start to change the narrative. It is not absorbing, it is ethnic cleansing. in Williamsburg Greenpoint. Before the upzoning, it was the most a sample. There were so many Puerto Ricans living here. You wouldn't know the difference between there and Puerto Rico in San Juan. Today, we have less than 15% of the population that is Latino. They are gone, it is the most completely white. The same thing is happening all over. What I am here to say is that the Trans Coalition for Community Vision is prepared to fight with you. That is, we are going to be fighting with you, we are going to be fighting in the Bronx. One day, we are going to come together in one massive force, and we are going to win this battle, this war, and we are going to stay here. Uh, good evening. My name is 
Dr. Allegra Legrea. I'm here as a 15-year resident of Inwood. I'm also a climate scientist. I moved to New York to be a climate scientist. I'm a lead author on the National Climate Assessment. And I'm, my employer is not important, but I work at, you know, I work at NASA. I work at Manhattan at Columbia. Talking about climate change, I'm one of the people that you would come to to talk to for an expert opinion. I gave my most expert opinion in the scoping document that was used to design the EIS. And one of my concerns that I had at the hearing for that back in September was that somebody who was qualified to do so would look over the, the document. And that didn't happen. And when that didn't happen, it resulted in things like them say, saying that even though schools are 105% capacity today, don't worry, 10% of the students are going to just disappear. Don't worry, the schools aren't going to be overcrowded even though you're adding on a third tier population. What happened was I said, you know, how are you going to look at the air quality? Air quality is impacted by climate change. There's a certain method for looking at air quality and the techniques that they use are dated and they exclude some of the most important climate parameters in determining how, what controls air quality. How fast is the wind speed? What are the wind speed gusts like? I'm disappointed uh, in the way that they consider flooding because the flooding that's considered, everyone still goes back to the FEMA maps and everyone in the field knows that these are designed to assess your climate risk, your flood risk today, this year, not in 30 years time, this year. In order to get to risk for 30 years time, you have to come to climate projection. And the statistic that Chris was mentioning earlier is this. What was the 200 year storm in the early 19th century based on climate change projections will become the five year storm by 2045. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. I appreciate it. Go ahead. After this is Amy Berto and Mikhail uh, Sherman. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Wanda Fabian. I lived in Five Forty Ashes since I was three years old. I'm 49 years old now. I raised a 30 year old daughter. My son has a scholarship from Mount St. Michael for his academics. And um, I have a granddaughter that's nine years old. I met my landlord um, when my mother passed away in my apartment that we lived in for 45 years. And I told him that I could live here since I was three. He shook my hand, he met my family. You know what he did? He took a whole year before he took my rent. He wanted to evict us. We had to go to court, miss days from work, which I did not get back. The court system is a joke. If you go to the court system, the majority, 100% of the people that are there is because the landlords are not doing their jobs. Can you not see this? So what does it take? People to be depressed, to kill themselves, to suicide, to think that they're not supposed to do why? Because all you think about is money. And at the end of the day, it's not going nowhere. You're just ruining people's lives, making people miserable, but nothing. When we can all come together and make New York powerful as a team, as a whole, as a family. Because at the end of the day, if one falls on the top, it's going to come down. And if it falls on the bottom, it's going to go up. Thank you very much. This is the last of them. Randy uh, Marcus, Nancy Popowski, uh, Wendy Feinstein, Edwin Rosario Mazzara, Marlene Sanchez. <laughs> Come on up. I have everybody. I have everybody. Just a quick announcement, if a woman left her phone in the bathroom, it is in our video booth in the lobby. Hello. Um, to, uh, to the proposed plan, 
I really can't get much. But what I do want to say is something direct to you, Gail, because we had some discussion about the library, and you have said to the community that you have a lot of experience with uh, renovation of the libraries. So you referred to the St. Patrick's Library. That was all the results of many of them. Well, that was the big one that you referred to, but in each each and every one of these libraries, what happened was, especially in St. Agnes, that took two and a half years only, and like uh, close to $8 million, most of which the city council paid for, and what it couldn't pay for, they got private donations like from the Zabar. So that was very clever. They did not have to um, sell their rights. They didn't have to have pocket rezoning for that library because there was no intention to do anything to it. So, but what you did was, you, for people who use that library, they had a choice, either going to Bloomingdale Library at 100th Street or going to the Riverside Library at 66th Street. You have no other option for us because we will have to go to either either the Bronx or we have to go to the West Washington Heights Library and it will be a fair zone because no those kids can't walk that distance. They will not be getting the kind of services and programs they are accustomed to. Uh, it's just a sham. Um, then your the solution doesn't work for us. But I do have a recommendation. Number one, we keep the England Library as is. And we do need additional library space and attics. And why not ask um, Zabar, why not ask our uh, target? No, 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 I'm not going to time. time you is are up. asking us to build time housing. No, the time is up. He has not addressed the housing in decades. I got it. Your time is a reason for doing that. Okay, I got time over here. Hello, thank you, Gail. Uh, my name is Gwendolyn R. Shamron. I'm a member of the Manhattan Stop for Sale and Saving of Library. I've lived in Inwood for three and a half years. Inwood is home to a friendly, diverse, welcoming, and supportive community. However, the real estate market is increasingly hostile towards working and middle class residents, let alone the poor. Transportation is increasingly unreliable with delays, breakdowns, and overcrowding. Our infrastructure is precarious. High commercial rents have driven away neighborhood amenities. Our beloved award-winning library, which also serves as a much-needed community resource, is being threatened. Upzoning this neighborhood would fast-track gentrification and drive out working and middle-class residents and small business owners. Upzoning Inwood would erase much of its history by destroying the unity of design of the mostly six to seven <coughs> buildings. Cold glass towers reflect the selfish narcissism of our age and would cast shadows where green roofs and solar panels would be much more welcome and environmentally sound. Please do not allow the avaricious real estate industry to remake our Inwood home into its own image. Please vote no on the Inwood rezoning. Please pass the Uptown United Plan. Thank you very much. And I'm going to read um, on behalf of my husband, John Ferrard. Um, my name is John Ferrard, and I'm a member of Northern Manhattan. It's not for sale. I've lived in this neighborhood since 1981. The last time we met in this forum was to testify why the neighborhood needs to keep its library more than it needs to demolish it for a handful of so-called affordable apartments. Now the library remains in peril because its fate is now linked to some of our small businesses which would also be demolished to make way for luxury housing and a small number of affordable apartments. My points are to save our library and separate its fate from the rezoning, preserve our rent stabilized laws and strengthen them, adopt Uptown United's platform. Um, I also have a testimony from Adele Altman, who also couldn't be here, and I'll just read you the end to use my two minutes. Um, so so she, she said, um, it is the land market that drives up the cost of housing. Even talk of upzoning increases the future value of land. 
a full year before the ABC call out its inward New York City plan, speculators were buying and rent stabilized buildings in Washington Heights and Inwood as investments to be flipped as the market heated up. Let me give you an example of this. Since at least 2014, Michael A. Ray of Heritage Realty has been buying and selling properties in northern Manhattan. Last April, he sold a rent stabilized building at 720 West 180th Street for $32 million, less than three years after purchasing it for $16 million. $32 million is more than 27 times its most recently reported annual gross income of $1.7 million. The new owner paid this astronomical price in anticipation of what the rent will be after its regulated tenants have been dislodged. In 2016, ARA bought two buildings on Wadsworth, one at 221 for $13.5 million and the other at 130 for $12 million. Since 2014, the number of times up, the rent regulated in the second building declined from 24 to 21. Thank you very much. Thank you. This side, okay. has been doing organizing around small businesses, um, since that's one of the constituencies that you most seem to care about. Um, and we're going to be sending in video testimonies. Um, Thank you. Small business owners who couldn't make it here today because, well, you know, they're breaking even basically at this point and can't afford the time, or can't make the time to be here. Um, I guess I just wanted to say, you know, anecdotally that during my more or less year working with my council and when the Manhattan is not for sale, one of the things that has stuck out to me the most is the way that, you know, these, these issues overlap. Um, when we say that low-income tenants in Inwood are struggling, I guess to paint a picture, um, so I work in the Uptown Tenants' Rights Clinic, and it's, it's really remarkable the, the way that this issue, this housing crisis, overlaps with mental health. Um, it's been several tenants now that have said that at night, you know, they think about the GW Bridge wanting to jump off it because they can't stand really the idea of um, being, you know, being homeless. I can't tell you the number of women as well that call our Met Council hotline and say that they're staying because they're staying in an abusive relationship because they can't afford to leave. Um, their homes, they wouldn't know where to go. So again, it's, it's several, and, and seniors, you know, so it's it's a mental health issue, it's a gender issue, it's a senior issue, um, and it's these most vulnerable demographic groups basically facing homelessness. And this housing crisis is a sinking ship, and the inward rezoning is less than a band-aid on it. It's basically like darts onto it, you know, it's making this housing crisis sink much, much sooner than it has to. Thank you very much. Thank you to consider the uptown community platform. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Inwood resident. I love Inwood, and I implore you to vote no against the proposed Inwood rezoning plan. I can speak on various traits that make Inwood so distinctive, wonderful, and unique, which would be harmed by the proposed rezoning. Our geography, our parks, our social diversity. If any neighborhood in Manhattan could be considered a hamlet, it would be Inwood. However, many of my neighbors have already so eloquently addressed that issue, so I'm going to instead address the economic and social harms that this proposed rezoning poses to my community. A plan which purports to provide affordable housing to some, yet results in displacing of scores of low and middle income people is not a good plan. It's instead a roadmap to changing the diverse space of our Inwood into one that is homogenous, economically, racially, and ethnically. In the course of my professional life, I've had an opportunity to work with low income residents, I've had an opportunity to work with tenants, I've had an opportunity to pour over various government contracts between developers and um, the government and developers, as well as regulatory agreements, many of which were designed to provide affordable housing. I've seen many instances professionally in which these affordable housing proposals were packaged very nicely, often with bows on top, only to have significant fallout afterwards for the tenants. And that is always the party in these scenarios who is the losing party in the equation, who never had the equal or commensurate bargaining power to contain with. I implore you to reconsider this proposal because I believe that it would truly destroy the distinctive character, nature, affordable housing in our neighborhood. We simply do not have enough enforcement of the red regulation laws that are being done to affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank market rate development is an insult to the people who live in Inwood. Uh, we need something better. We need to preserve existing affordable housing. We need to protect tenants who have preferential rents, who are at risk of losing their housing any day. Um, and we need to make sure that any new development is truly 100% affordable for the people who already live here. Uh, I'd also like to mention that the area where we're meeting right now is not included in this plan. The plan needs to extend south of Dyke because there is no border. Inwood does not end at Dyke Um So I guess really what I'm asking is for you to vote no on the EDC's plan. Give us time to consider a better rezoning plan. Uh, and I would also ask you to support the Uptown United platform, which truly comes from the Indian community. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good evening. My name is Bill Morawski. I'm the producer of an award-winning public access show titled Dewey Clinton Express, a neighborhood news program. The publisher of Dewey Clinton Express, a neighborhood newspaper that is now in its fifth year, and the founder of Dewey Clinton Park Restoration Foundation, whose neighborhood, whose neighborhood renovation plan titled the Phoenix Road Driving Project has been on hold for command because of Manhattan Community Board 4. Your board, but I'm not here for that. I know the park. I know you do. My testimony tonight is a short one. I want you, Gail Brewer, as borough president of Manhattan, to immediately cancel the EULA process regarding the zoning of the Inwood neighborhood. Although I live in Hell's Kitchen, I also have roots in Inwood that go back to the day of Gary Owen Pub and the Battle of the Bands, in which were held at the school auditorium at the Church of the Good Shepherd during the late 60s and early 70s. <coughs> Now, it's often said that little lepers don't change their spots. To all of you who are unaware, Gabe Brewer served as a New York City Council member, serving the sixth city council district in Manhattan from January 1st, 2002 to December 31st, 2013. Her district covered the west side of Manhattan from 55th Street to 96th Street. When Gail Brewer served as a city council member, 
So sometimes she also served on the New York City Council's Park and Recreation Committee during the same time her very close first cousin, Adrian Banapi, was serving as Manhattan Borough Parks and Recreation Commissioner. Whether or not the Brew was beneficial to her first cousin, Adrian Benepi, as a city council member, intentionally or not, or who helped him to become New York City Parks and Recreation Committee is not important at this time. What is important at this time is to be aware that the New York City Parks and Recreation Department granted certain friends, certain friends, supporters, and companies the right to, to the right to operate the city. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, you got a good fight ahead for you. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Okay, I'm here uh, to speak for the older residents of Inwood. Actually, I'm here to speak for all of you. Because if you're lucky, you'll be an older resident. And if you're lucky, you can live in a neighborhood like Inwood, which is really good for older residents. We can walk to stores, to the park, to the library. And we're treated very well by our neighbors. Many elders stay in their apartments, the same apartment, for 30, 40 years. Sometimes they don't have gas, that happened in my place. Sometimes they don't have heat. And you ask them, why don't they move? And they say, because I have a rent stabilized apartment, maybe I even have street if I'm really brave, and I have a home. I know at least I have a home. But now, we're in danger of being evicted and not having a home. So elders get to downsize. Some elders will get to downsize to a shopping cart. They can apply for senior housing, but as Gail well knows, the waiting list is 200,000 people. We cannot live that long. So I went, I went to East Harlem to get my car fixed, and I saw block after block of condemned buildings. I turned a corner, and I saw a bulldozer block. Just totally bulldozed, except for one building on the corner. I went around the corner and I read the sign on the door. And it said, it is dangerous to live here. Warning, if this rezoning comes in, it will be dangerous for elders in this community to live here. Thank you very much. Soy la presidenta del de uh, Consejo de Presidentes del Distrito 6. Uh, pero en el día de hoy no vengo representando al Distrito 6 en el Consejo de Presidentes, represento a un miembro de la comunidad. Eh, si nosotros no podemos ser parte de la solución, no debemos de ser parte del problema. Los cambios de nuestra comunidad nos afectan directamente a las minorías, a las personas de bajos recursos. Y esas personas no están haciendo acto de presencia, están formando parte de las decisiones que se están tomando. Muchas por miedos y otras porque no tienen toda la información. Mucha gente aún ni se entera de los planes que hay para su comunidad. Se vienen a enterar cuando ya los proyectos están en marcha. Otras personas hacen eco de lo que dice un grupo grande y eso aceptan como la verdad. Hay muchos cambios que nuestra comunidad necesita y uno de ellos es vivienda, vivienda asequible, espacio comunitario, servicios para personas de bajos recursos y en realidad este proyecto tiene el potencial. Hay algunas quejas que son válidas. Una de ellas es que nuestra comunidad necesita escuelas nuevas. Sí, nuestra comunidad necesita escuelas nuevas, pero la persona encargada y el departamento encargado de hacer estas escuelas, de crear y construir estas escuelas, es el departamento de educación y es el departamento de construcción de escuelas. Y muchas veces nosotros le ponemos a un y culpamos a las personas equivocadas. Y yo creo que también nos deberíamos unir como comunidad y, y, y culpar a las personas que realmente son los responsables de hacer las cosas. Porque cuando hay algo, un proyecto tan grande, eh, le tiramos a la persona más cercana, a la persona que quizás es el que está escuchando, cuando a veces es otra persona que es la responsable de hacer estos cambios. Yo creo que no debemos decir que no simplemente por decir que no. Hay que proveer razones, proveer opciones y proveer soluciones. El cambio no es malo por el simple hecho de ser un cambio. Necesitamos personas que den una razón legítima para actuar, que están en contra de este proyecto. Es un proyecto que no es perfecto. Gracias. Gracias. Oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
Daniela Sanchez. Uh, she is a president of the uh, uh, Parents Council of District 6. Uh, the changes to the community affect everybody, but many parts of this community uh, have not participated in this process. They either did not know, they learned about it late, once the project was already in progress. Um, and very often they accept the messages of larger organizations or groups as true. Um, I believe that many parts of this plan have potential, um, but uh, there is there's some negative reaction. Um, sometimes we lash out at what is um, people who are closest to us, even though they are not the ones responsible for the decisions. Um, it's important not to say no, just to say no. Um, that uh, we need to provide solutions um, and and work together. And sorry, I missed some of that because of feedback. I want to thank everyone who stayed so long. Give yourself.